Every year, more than 1.3 million people are killed in road traffic. That's the equivalent to the population of cities like Prague or San Diego. That's one person killed every 25 seconds somewhere on our planet. Traffic is currently the number one cause of death worldwide for young people aged 5 to 29. More people die in traffic than from tuberculosis. Crashes will kill another 15 million people over the next 10 years if nothing changes. To die in traffic is nobody's fate. People used to believe that the plague was destiny. Then they recognized the root causes and eliminated them. Road deaths are entirely preventable, like most diseases. Once we accept that and act on that, we can really combat fatal crashes. Nine out of 10 road deaths occur in low and middle income countries, even accounting for population size. 10 times more people die on South African roads compared to Norway. Rapid motorization in the global south is one reason. China now has 10 times more cars than 15 years ago. Nigeria quadrupled its car fleet from 2015 to 2018. The road networks have not kept up. Also, many vehicles are unsafe. 80 to 90% of cars in Africa are secondhand. Often, there are those no longer considered safe in rich countries. Even new imports often come with substandard safety features. In many countries, powered two-wheelers dominate the streets and the crash statistics. In Malaysia, motorcyclists account for 60% of the road deaths and 75% in Cambodia. Road crash statistics from many countries are often inaccurate. Improving data is one building block to steer action that could stop the carnage. Road deaths and injuries cost rich countries around 3% of GDP. For low-income countries, it can be twice that much. In Europe, it amounts to twice the European Union's budget. Crashes that kill or maim for life cause untold human suffering. They also make us all poor. Victims often can't work fully anymore and contribute to general prosperity. Society bears huge costs to pay for long-term medical care. Countries that do not invest in road safety actually forgo potential economic growth. Effective road safety measures are actually a very good deal. The International Road Assessment Program calculates that an investment of $1 in road safety improvements generates a return of $8. Up to 50 million people suffer serious injuries in traffic crashes every year. Road deaths grab headlines, but they're really only the tip of the iceberg. Bringing down the number of road deaths may look like success, um, but what's the point if the crash victims only just survive? Sure, they won't appear in the fatality statistics. They will still suffer severe, probably life-changing injuries. But shifting the focus on injury risks automatically also reduces the risk of injuries that are deadly. The human factor is involved in 90% of crashes. Vehicle automation can help limit behavioral mistakes. Advanced driver support technology is already at work in many modern cars, trucks, and buses. Volvo Group believes crashes are preventable. Our safety vision is zero accidents involving our products. Together with a safe systems approach, the new and rapidly maturing technologies provide great potential to create a truly sustainable transport system, all to safeguard lives in and around our vehicles and machines. Will sensors and computers put an end to all car collisions? Automation has a huge potential for reducing crash risks, but it might also create new ones, especially during the transition. Full automation of all vehicles is decades off, certainly in poor countries that have the most road deaths. Until then, we'll have to deal with mixed traffic and situations where control of the car switches between the computer and the human. This will make traffic more complex, not less. Our answer should not be to shift the burden, like requiring pedestrians to wear transponders. The vehicles themselves must be safe. For that, we need more staged testing and also in-depth analysis of the safety-related data these vehicles produce, for instance, about near misses. Most of all, 
automated driving must be conceived as a core part of a fundamental, comprehensive, safe system approach. Eighty percent of traffic deaths in cities are pedestrians and cyclists. The risk of vulnerable road users to die in urban traffic is ten times that of car passengers. City traffic should be safe for everyone. Moving about without fear is a core feature of a livable city. If cities focus on protecting children and senior citizens, it will make traffic safer for all. If people feel safe walking and cycling, they will take fewer car trips. In 2015. Oslo decided to invest heavily in pedestrian and bicycle-friendly infrastructure. In 2019, not a single pedestrian or cyclist died on the streets of Norway's capital. A pedestrian hit by a car driving 30 kilometers per hour has a survival chance of 90 percent. At 50 k, such a crash is like a fall from a third-floor window. The survival chance is less than 50 percent. The human body can sustain only a limited amount of kinetic energy. Beyond that, injuries occur. The obvious answer is speed management. 30 k should be the maximum speed where cars, cyclists, and pedestrians mix. But there are more tools than speed limits. How we train drivers, enforce rules, and design roads. Roundabouts force drivers to slow down. For instance, they also have fewer points of conflict and make collisions at dangerous angles almost impossible. There is now ample evidence to show that a reduction of just one percent in the average speeds of vehicles lead to a reduction of four percent of in the number of fatal crashes. Thirty-three percent of e-scooter crashes end with head injuries, twice as many as with bicycles, according to a recent U.S. study. The bicycle has long been a favorite for shorter trips. Recently, electric bikes, e-scooters, and also more exotic devices have become hugely popular. Are they the future of urban mobility or safety risks on wheels? Innovations in micromobility may bring new crash risks, but if we understand those risks, we can counter them. Eight out of ten fatal crashes with micro vehicles involve cars, so micro mobility requires protection, its own protected street space, or traffic calming, where all vehicles must share the space. Street design must also serve the safety of those using micro vehicles. If we can make it safe, micro mobility rhymes with opportunity, that of shaping a sustainable urban mobility landscape. Zero deaths on our roads is the vision we must aim for. It is unacceptable that anyone should lose his or her life as the price for other people to get from A to B. Are zero road deaths possible? It's a vision, and I am optimistic. A vision makes us think about what needs to actually happen so we get there. It changes our mindset, and the truth is, we have become far too complacent about road safety. We have accepted it as normal that people die in traffic. But our starting point should be that crashes must never be deadly, even if someone makes a mistake. If we transform our human mobility based on this idea, what now seems utopian comes into reach.